Today, we're speaking with Omar Ahmed. He's in sales at Limus Automation, and he has quite the interesting journey where he traveled halfway around the world in search of what his journey was going to be, spent times in marketing before finding his feet in technology sales. You'll enjoy this one. Stay tuned. Welcome to Seller's Journey, the podcast where we speak to great sales reps and leaders and share their real stories from start to sales success. Hi, Omar. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm, where are you calling in from today? So I'm calling in from North York, uh, Ontario. Awesome. Thank you for spending the time with us. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm happy and excited to, to be here and to speak with you. So... I love the fact that uh, you're, in, you're in tech sales. We speak to a lot of people who are in kind of B2B software. Uh, you focus on industrial internet of things. Uh, can you give us the pitch? What's the elevator pitch for Litmus Automation? For sure. So Litmus, Litmus Automation is a software company. Uh, we're about a, a 50-person team situated across uh, Toronto, San Jose, and Tokyo, and what we provide is a software that essentially helps manufacturing organizations to collect different types of industrial data and to make insights from that. Awesome. And in, in your role, um, you mentioned how you have a bit of a, a 360 view on things. Um, you know, with, with many companies, we wear many hats. Uh, would it be some of the things that you're really focused on these days? For sure. So I was actually, Litmus has actually blown up recently after their Series A round, but I was the first salesperson in the company besides a sales engineer mm -hmm. and the VP of sales in Japan. And so since the beginning, I've worn many different hats, whether it's focusing on business development, you know, doing discovery calls, you know, going to events. And really, you know, for me, it's just been doing whatever I need to do to help the company succeed. And um, anywhere from doing prospecting to having those initial calls to you know, closing deals to just keeping customers happy. You know, I've, I've done it all at my time at Libmus. Nice. So when I, and when I think about your story, one of the things that, that intrigued me was um, like many people, you, you didn't study right near your home, but unlike many, you studied really far from home. Can you share a little bit where, where did you do your undergrad uh, and, and what did you study? For sure. So I actually went to high school in Dubai um, it's a bit of a long story, but oh, my dad, started there. I didn't yeah, even so, realize that you were in Dubai <laughs> to kick it off. Okay, let's so, let's rewind even further. Start there. Sure. Okay, so I grew up in Markham, Ontario, and but my my originally my parents are from Pakistan, and they had spent some time in the Middle East as well. So um, when I was in ninth grade, my dad was offered a, a senior level job at a bank in, in Dubai, and for mm. me at that point in time, I was so young and I had spent my entire life in Markham and I was just like, what's going on? You know, what is Dubai? Do they, you know, do they go on camels to school? <laughs> what have you? <laughs> but um, so I went to, to Dubai for high school, the American School of Dubai. From there, I, after that, for my undergrad, I went to uh, Dalhousie, which is in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, it was a great, great time there. And then I did my, my graduate program in, in Australia. And that uh, was really one of the most interesting and unique and, and really actually cool experiences you know, of my life. Wow. So we, we start off just outside Toronto, going to Dubai, coming back, uh, going to uh, out east in Nova Scotia, then heading out to Australia. You've been all over. I have. I've been to a few places. Okay. And uh, what were you studying? So my undergraduate degree, it was, you know, a BA, you know, I was focused mm -hmm. on philosophy and I know that a lot of people were, you know, saying, you know, do business and this and that. So I tried some business courses and, you know, I went, I went against the grain. I went towards what, you know, what I was passionate about and my parents supported that. And so Great. I did a lot of classes around ethics and being able to sort of articulate different types of arguments, um, look at things objectively, provide sort of rational argument, you know, arguments and look at different types of points of view and that was and I, and I really enjoyed that experience my master's degree was a bit more sort of business focused it was around the topic of um, communication to business so it was technically it was a, a master's of corporate communication and that focused on different topics around advertising uh, marketing conflict resolution and corporate training so you know as you think about all those it makes sense that uh you, know, you got into a, a marketing role. Was that the direction you were aiming for? You know, how did how did you land that first job? 
So that you know, that's a great question. I decided to start my career in Toronto just because I had you know, had grown up there, and at that point in time, you know, sales, at least to my knowledge, wasn't it wasn't talked about too much, and there was a connotation about sales being really like kind of like live and die, close, and for me, I just thought that marketing was was you know where I wanted to go just based on online marketing and online advertising really being so big at that point in time. So I, you know, I began an application process, applied, you know, started to try to look for my first job. And I, I landed my first job at a company called Leonardo, which is about a, I'd say probably about a 200, maybe 80, 80 to 150 person company right on Peter Street, focused on um, digital advertising for the, the travel industry. And I was in sort of a, a marketing co- coordinator type role. So you, you come back, you've had this kind of world view where you've had a chance to see so many different you know, cultures and countries. Um, you've studied communication, you're in a marketing world. A lot of this, it, it makes sense. It fits together really well. What got you thinking about a role in sales? So I was at uh, Leonardo for a couple of years and I realized that something was missing from the equation and I didn't quite know what it is, but after some introspection, I realized that a big part of what I'm passionate about as a human being is being able to communicate with other people, being able to, you know, just have that dialogue and, and understand other human beings and in that particular role. And, and I'm sure that does exist within some marketing type of capacity. But for me, you know, the idea of sales just made sound, just, it just made sense. And I just decided to try to make that leap and, and that plunge into sales because I wasn't really feeling as much passion about you know, what I was doing in that marketing role. So when you, when you came to that realization, uh, and you decided that you were, you're going to be getting into sales, um, what was that journey like? Was it a quick drop off a resume? You got the job. Was there a big search? What, what was the journey like? It was, it was a little challenging. Um, it was a little challenging. Uh, yeah, it was a little challenging to be honest. It was, you know, it wasn't easy, especially when you're so early in your career. It's, you know, it's a lot, the ability to sort of get opportunities is, is more difficult than it is when you start to have a couple, you know, years on your belt and you can leverage that experience for a future role. So being able to get your first job in sales is, is pretty tough. And at that point in time, Joseph, I, I you know, I just mm-hmm. didn't have any knowledge of sort of the technology sales as far as, you know, BDR or AE or, or tech sales. All I knew was that sales, you know, it, it was it was a sort of a profession. I was aware of sort of the Xeroxes and I was aware of sort of that capacity. So um, it was it was it was unique and it was interesting. But it, I, I felt like this that was the right place for me. So if we're we're thinking back to that, you've got you've got more experience, you've got several roles under your belt, you've had this impact at several companies. Thinking back to you know uh, Omar at that point in time, you know, when you're kind of out searching struggling with that without that experience and you, you you don't have that background what's some of the advice that you would kind of give yourself from the past uh, or somebody else that was in a similar boat you know what would you do to to help them succeed what thoughts do you have so my advice would be that um, a you need to not uh, i know that sort of rejection is a is a challenging feeling but you know, one must understand that you really just have to put yourself out there, do the activity as far as it comes to work. So really put forth that energy towards, you know, networking with your networking, um, putting out, you know, applications, just doing everything you can to try to speak to as many people as as you can, whether that's through like an actual um, application or whether that's through an actual interview or whether it's just more of like an informal type of meet and greet. But mm-hmm. you really just have to put yourself out there and you really actually have to really do the, do the work. Um, and and you, will, you, will, you will see the results. You'll build essentially a funnel. Like when you're applying for a job, you, you apply to X number of jobs, you'll get X number of interviews, and then you'll sort of, you'll, you'll trickle down. And, and for somebody who's in sales, they understand that, that that's the process, how, how it's worked since the beginning of time. But when, when, you, when you don't have that sales background, you may take things to heart. You may you may feel um, feel upset that you you know you've applied to these jobs and only X amount of people have responded, or or you've got these rejections. But that that's just the nature of the game, and it's just the same as when you're applying when you're selling a product. 
that you're going to talk have this many discovery calls, which will result in this many demos, which will result in this many opportunities, which will result in this many closes. It's all sort of a science, but when you're when you're young and you don't know, you may kind of take it to heart a bit. So, I mean, you clearly put in the legwork. You spoke about overcoming those challenges to get your first role. Um, if we think about your your most recent, you know, getting getting into the role at Litmus, uh, was it a similar journey? You know, was it the same uh, kind of work, or or how did you, uh, you know, kind of get into your most recent opportunity? Yeah, so I I joined Litmus about th- three years and five months ago. Uh, so it's a pretty good tenure as far as in the technology space. I um, I knew that I wanted to get into more of this sort of a startup type of technology environment. I knew that selling more of a complex solution, such as a software, would be better for my, you know, my 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 professional resume. And so I started to look for sort of more of like a BDR type of opportunity, like more of a, I knew that I would have to take a couple steps back in order to take a couple steps forward. Uh, meaning in my previous role it was a 360 sale, but it was not, you know, a complex sale. So, you know, I got a, a sort of a, bun- a bunch of sort of these offers from different companies, um, like you know, just a whole bunch. And I chose Litmus because Litmus was a smaller company. And I felt that when Litmus would grow, I could grow with it. And it'd be, it'd be great to kind of create a process and help in that sort of that state, kind of that, that growth and expand, you know, that growth and um, sort of scaling. And um, it's, it, it's been a really positive experience. That's great. So, so think back when you talked about first getting into sales, you mentioned how you were aware that it was a profession and, you know, the, the companies that are well renowned for like Xerox. Uh, but now that you, you've been in sales and you reflect on your early assumptions, what's been the biggest surprise? You know, what's kind of, what's kind of sparked your interest and uh, yeah. hmm. your curiosity the most? I think what's, what's really um, excited me about professional selling is just the amount of enthusiasm and, and energy in the space and the amount of tech, professional technology salespeople. And actually the importance of sales within the entire tech space could not be un, you know understated. It, you know, it's just it is just such an immensely popular and incredible profession right now. And it's it's just it's just blowing up. Like it's if you go on LinkedIn and you look at these different types of companies like Gong.io and and Drift and all these incredible kind of companies, there's just such excitement in the space. And it's so wonderful to be a part of a profession which has um, just so much excitement around it. And it's so important. It's so important for, for the entire tech space because you can build the product, but, but you need to sell the product. And, and it's, it's really, it's a great career to be in right now and, and hopefully forever. That's awesome. So if thinking about kind of where you've come from, you've got this chance to, to kind of travel and kind of take control of your own direction. Uh, you've worked at a, a couple of technology companies now, uh, but still fairly early in your journey, and, and the journey is not done yet. So, what what does the future hold for you? What do you still aim to accomplish? For sure. So, I think what's important for me is to one thing about my personality, um, Joseph, is I always believe in, in sort of in the process and and you know putting in the necessary amount of work in order to get to the next stage. So I'm a hundred percent okay with with sort of micro progression in my career and incremental steps to improve as long as I'm going in that direction. And I mm. believe and I trust the process. And I believe when you put the work in, you will achieve that. I have had um, I have had some limited management experience at Limbus. I hired sort of a BD person, and I really enjoyed and appreciated the ability to inspire another person to come into work and to feel positive and to feel happy and enjoy their and roll. So that was something I really liked. Um, you know, I think I want to do a couple more years of sort of just at least one more year or two more years of just peer selling, handling a quota, really just being kind of getting my, you know, just really being full in the trenches. And after that, you know, I think I'd like to try to get into some type of management capacity and help to inspire other people. Well, thank you for, for sharing. I, I like that idea of, um, you know, kind of putting in the time before uh, kind of jumping to that next opportunity. And uh, I love the way you described that, that impact that you had. So, so thank you for, for sharing. My pleasure. Um, we've got a couple of rapid fire questions for you before we wrap up. Uh, okay. Thinking about the companies you've worked at, uh, what's been your favorite sales tool? Phone. 
Nice. Without a doubt. Solid. Telephone. Solid. Make the dials, hit the numbers. That's it. There's when you call somebody, it's it just is what it is. It, it, I to be honest, I barely ever get calls. Like people don't call me. So when somebody calls me these days, it's actually a really good way to get speak to somebody. Especially while we're all working from home. Uh you know, doubling down on that's good. Hundred percent. Okay. Outside of the office, outside of work. What's your favorite movie? Um I would say uh American Pie. Nice. Nice. <laughs> good comedy. Gotta <laughs> keep, gotta be real. <laughs> Uh, and it, you you had a chance to kind of travel the world before settling on your path. But when you were a kid, what did you want to grow up to be? I think I wanted to be a comedian or an actor. Nice, nice. Uh, the uh, the programming element of that definitely shows up since shows up in sales. So <laughs> that's <see> right. That. <laughs> this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for taking the time and for sharing your journey. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, Looking forward to our next conversation. Hope you stay safe and uh, have a great afternoon. You too.